So he gave this earth its ecosystems. So he gave this earth a sky, acting as it were a canopy to protect it from stars and missiles from falling inside to kill it and destroy it. And so he gave this earth a carpet with mountains and streams and placed upon that earth mountains to give it the balance it needs. And he gave that earth all kinds of vegetation. And he gave that earth the majority of its surface water so that it had life to generate other forms of life. And inside those oceans he placed countless forms of life that we have yet to discover. And he placed inside those mountains gold, ore, diamonds, all kinds of things from which we gain our benefit from. And he placed inside the atmosphere itself what we need just to breathe and live. And from the dirt of the earth, he created the human beings after he created all the other forms of life. This is the decree that has been made in the Quran that was revealed 1,424 years ago. This is not Walt Disney. This is not Steven Spielberg. This is the voice of the creator of the heavens and the earth giving you and I some details. And he revealed this to his servant, his illiterate servant, born in the desert 1,424 years ago. And then he says that he created us from dust Dirt, a substance from the earth, mixed with water. In one place he calls it nutfa. Nutfa means sperm. In another place he calls it turab. It means dust. In another place he calls it salsalin. It means a mixture of sounding clay. All of these themselves are descriptions of the origin of the human being and his nature. Then in the same verses, what does he say? He says, first, we created you from sperm, and after sperm, made you into a clot of blood clinging to the womb. Now think about that. When was it discovered from a scientific point of view, from an academic point of view, when was it discovered? When was that discovered? That the sperm, when it impregnated the egg, became a fetus, and then that, I mean, became a clot of blood, and that clot of blood clung to the womb of the mother so that it could get the nutrition and become a host so the mother would become a host and she would begin to feed it without even her own volition. Then he says, from that clot of blood, it began to hang. And now we know from scientific filming, scientific documentation, that the sperm swims, millions of sperm, and only one hits that egg. Then that egg settles in the womb. When it settles in the womb, it germinates. When it germinates and breaks open, it becomes a clot of blood. And then it clings to the womb. Then after that, it starts to hang from the womb. And that hanging part is the umbilical cord. The Quran said that. Then he says, from that hanging clot, then we make into it a fetus. Now we, now we know that nine weeks into pregnancy, the fetus is there. The fetus, what is it? It's the brain. It's the spinal cord. It's the part of the human being that gives it all the senses and its identity. Then we know at 21 weeks, it's a fully grown embryo. With the heart pumping, with the lungs breathing, with the eyes 
fully formed with the hands and the fingers and the toes and the kidneys functioning. Fully formed at 21 weeks, at 12 weeks, I'm sorry. 12 weeks, fully formed. Then he says, then we clothe that fetus with skin. Go to the scientific manuals and see what this process has been discovered, if it is not accurate. And then he says, after that, we clothe it. Then after that, we bring it forward as another creature. So it comes forward as a child. Because as a child, now it has its own personality. It is given its own spirit. It is given its own designation. It comes forward, it is named a child, a human with its own name and identity. This is what the Quran says, 1,424 years ago, our beginning. Then he says, after some time, you will die. A fact, no maybe, not some of you, not the poorest of you, not the weakest of you, but all of you will come through this process and then you will die. 